Oh, what's up everyone welcome to nodes and welcome to a brand new series on on key clock and i think it's been a while that uh, i was not uploading uh, any content on my youtube channel actually i was learning a new technology uh, which was key clock and i think it's not new but yeah it was new for me uh, when i was studying it and um, it really helped me a lot so i thought that it would be a good idea to you know uh, create a series on key clock to help you guys that how you can you know benefit from uh, this tool okay uh, so so let's let's start the proceeding of understanding that uh, what key clock is and how it helped me and how it will help you guys to you know improve your uh, full stack development okay uh, so for those who don't know what key clock is uh, just assume that key clock is just a application a full fledged uh, application which will just help you to authenticate and authorize users okay uh, for now i'm just assuming you that uh, you guys know about authentication and authorization okay so it's just a, a a place in which you can authenticate and authorize users so that's what key clock is in just a simple terms okay so let me just explain you uh, that how how it will help us uh, in in our full stack journey okay so let's say if you are having one application okay and inside this application let me just say that this application is a uh, to do application okay and again it's built on uh, react or nestjs um, that that's not the main concern here but for now just assume that it's one application which is to do application okay for somehow uh, we all know that implementing a full stack application means that there will be some users okay so there will be some users which will be interacting with with your application again okay and these users will be somehow uh, need to authenticate uh, in your application and will also need to authorize inside your application okay so for that uh, you obviously need to you know write your custom logic of authentication and authorization okay uh, and somehow let's say if if you are developing any any other application so let me just you know duplicate this and come over here and let's say you are developing any other application maybe it's it's an ERP or something else uh, for that application you also know that you have to somehow write the same logic of authentication and authorization because somehow under the hood we all know that there will be users which will be interacting with your applications okay so what key clock does is that if if let's say if, if, if i don't bring key clock into the picture what i will do is i will you know write the logic of authentication and authorization for both the applications right so what i will do is i will just you know come over here i will write that logic over here as well okay and same goes over here i have to write that logic for this one as well okay but what uh, this will do is again it's not a good practice because again i will be duplicating all the things but under the hood i know that authentication and authorization is again based on the same rules and same permissions okay so what if there is a solution in which i can extract this logic into a separate container okay so what i'm saying is let's say i just want to remove this logic from here as well as from here and i want to create a separate container which is just responsible for authentication and authorization okay authorization okay uh, sorry if if my spellings are uh, wrong i'm usually bad with the spellings by the way so let's say if, if i'm having a separate container of authentication authorization which is just handling the main logic and all of my users are there okay so all of my users are you know residing inside this container okay inside this container right over here and what now i can do is i can you know just focus on my main business use case and whenever there is a time in which i want to authenticate or authorize the users i can just you know simply communicate with this container i can get things done i can authenticate the user and then i can get that token back and after i get that token back i, I can you know um, access resources based on that token okay and same goes for this application as well okay so that's the overall concept here which key clock resolves okay okay so, so the good news here is that that implementing this authentication authorization logic i don't have to do it myself because this is what key clock is providing me okay so for implementing authentication authorization i don't have to do any other thing i can just bring on key clock and it will provide me with all the features of authentication and authorization okay so let me just you know uh, move this thing and i will just you know change this with key clock right over here okay so this is the main benefits of key clock that it is a central point for authenticating and authorizing users okay again uh, i'm just uh, 
telling you about the basic concept of authentication and authorization but under the hood uh, there are many other features which comes with key clock okay so so i just gave you an overall view of that how key clock comes into the picture and why do we need key clock okay and how it benefits us so now let's move on to the official documentation of key clock uh, which is this key clock.org and let's discuss that what key clock uh, can provide us okay so if you scroll down you can see that uh, it's an open source identity and access management. It uh, adds authentication to your applications and again services. Okay, so in, in our case, we were just discussing about monoliths, but again, the same concepts uh, will be applied to microservices as well. Okay, so the microservices will again can interact to key clock and can authorize and authenticate users as well. Okay. Uh, and again, uh, these are the features uh, which, which comes by default with key clock, which is single sign on. Again, you can provide social login with them. Uh, again, if you want to provide a single sign-on for Google, GitHub, or any other social provider, you can do that, okay? And again, you don't have to write any extra code for that. It's already written, okay? And again, you can um, save your users um, in some other place like LDAP, Active Directory, or our, our relational database. And you can just, you know, uh, with a single click, you can bring all the users in your key clock and everything will be just working fine, okay? And uh, this is the best part, <coughs> which I like about Keyclock, which is this admin console, okay? Which is just a console, which comes by default with Keyclock, which will provide you uh, to configure all the parameters of Keyclock according to your application needs, okay? So this is that admin console, okay? And apart from that, uh, the standard protocols, which comes by default with Keyclock is again, OpenID, OAuth2, and SAML. Again, we will be discussing that, what these protocols are in, in the coming on videos. For now, I'm just, you know, uh, showing you that what, what comes uh, by default with key clock. Okay. Again, there is single sign on, standard protocol, centralized management, social login, clustering if you want high scalable and high available solution. So it key clock also supports that as well. Okay. So it's, it's a very good solution. And I think it's, it has been nearly seven to eight years that key clock has been in the market. And I think it's, it's worth a try. Okay. So I think enough with the theory. Let's, let's jump to the practical demonstration and let's see that how we can uh, get our hand dirty with, with the key clock. Okay. So the best way uh, to uh, spin up key clock is with Docker. Okay. Although you can use, uh, uh, you can locally download the image. I think for that you need Java JDK, but I think the best way is to implement key clock in a, inside a Docker container. And I think that's should be uh, the main goal or the main way you should implement new technologies or you should learn new technologies with the help of Docker, okay? Because you don't have to install install any other uh, any other extra dependency when you're working with Docker, okay? So for that, you can just, you know, Google key clock uh, and Docker, okay? And this, will, uh, this is the first link, which will, you know, give you the Docker command for running key clock inside a Docker container. And I think this is this command right over here, okay? And again, Obviously, this is not recommended for production. It is just for testing purposes, okay? So Docker run port 8080, 8080, and we are just, you know, mapping our local port 8080 with the container port of 8080. And then we are just providing a username, admin, and password, which will be uh, the main, our master user username and password. So this is admin, admin, and after that, we are just providing the image, and then we are uh, starting in our in our development mode, okay? And once once you start uh, this Docker container, you can you know easily uh, then log into your um, admin console of Key Clock, and then you can create the realm, okay? So for now, just just we will just you know uh, simply spin up this this container and le and let's see that how how thing goes, okay? So let me just copy this command and let's just open the terminal. And let me just clear the screen. I think I was already running that key clock uh, container, but for now let's let's run it again. Okay, so let's place this thing and let's enter it. Okay, and uh, I think uh, in my case this image is already downloaded in my computer, so I think it won't take that much time. But uh, if you guys are trying this command for the first time, so uh, I think this image is nearly about 200 to 300 MB. So depending on your internet connection, it may take some time to, uh, to run this command. But in my case, you can see that it's not taking that much time and it's just initializing the database schema. And yeah, here you can see that listening on port HTTP localhost 8080. And I think it's now time to access our key clock instance. For that, you can just go to Google and let's hit our localhost 8080, okay? And when you hit that, you can see that, yeah, everything's working fine. It says you welcome to Keyclock. This is your administration console, which will take you to the main administration console, which I was talking about. And then you can read for the documentation and all that stuff, okay? Uh, but for now, let's let's jump to main to administration console. And right over here, you can, you know, provide the main master user username and password, which was in our case, it was admin admin. So let me say admin admin and let's click on sign in and within one click you can see that i have been logged in uh, to my 
key clock instance okay and there are many different terminologies right now you can see okay there are clients client scopes you are having realm roles users groups sessions events you are having realm settings you are having authentication identity identity providers user federation and all that stuff okay uh, right now obviously these terms will not be uh, you know uh, familiarized you, you will you are not familiarized by uh, these terms uh, but i do promise that in coming on videos we will discuss each and everything uh, regarding key clock okay uh, so for now, I think uh, that's enough for now in which we you know, just discussed that why do we need key clock, what are the main features of key clock and how we spin up uh, key clock in, inside our, our Docker container. Okay. And before going, I just want to, you know, uh, give you uh, just one more thing that right now you can see that I've spun the container in, in, in the active mode. Okay. And that's not the way we do things. Uh, I think the best way is to, you know, start your container uh, in, in the uh, uh detached mode okay so for that you have to just use the same command and you can just you know come to over here and you can just pass dash t for detached okay and what that will do is that will you know start your container in the background process and you can see here it the container is started and if i clear my screen and if i run docker ps this will show me that yeah this container is running uh and it is eight seconds up it is it was started eight seconds up and it was mapped it is being mapped with port 8080 to my local host port 8080 okay so uh, and if i go to my uh, chrome browser and if i refresh this thing uh, i think i need to sign in again if i go admin admin and enter this thing and you can see that still everything is working fine for now okay so yeah that's the overall picture right over here how we can you know configure key clock inside the docker container how we can uh, run it okay so that's the overall concept here in the coming on videos we will you know just start by understanding on uh, the realms in key clock what are realms and why do we need them okay so i hope you're liking my content if you're liking my content so do like and subscribe the channel i will see you in the next video thanks for watching